Well, all right. Now we'd like to learn a little bit about procedures. An object has properties, and it also has procedures, which are actions that it can perform. So packages of animations that will apply to that object. Here's an example. We've got a couple of fish. They swim away from each other. Fish swim. Bipeds walk. Quadrupeds walk as well, but they use four legs. If we were to take a look at the beginning of this animation, I have a clownfish. I delay a half a second just to let the Alice program render the screen. Then at the same time, I will get the tail to move, the front left fin will flap, and the fish moves forward. In the a tail, the tail moves first left, then right and back to its original position. So here we have it. There's a bit of a problem with this animation. Let's take a look at it again. The tail continues flapping well after the, the fish has stopped. Now when you have parallel animations, animations that are occurring at the same time, it's important that we get the timing of these animations to synchronize. So the, the one movement forward takes one full second. By default, each animation takes one second, which means that the fins flapping, one second plus one second gives me two seconds. Now I need that to occur at the same time as the one full second of the fish moving. So I will add detail, select duration to a half second for each of these two animations. Now when they are done in order, half second plus a half second gives me one full second which matches the clownfish moving forward with one whole second. There's three movements to the tail. To get the tail to work properly, let's say that moving this section here will take a quarter of a second. I got a half a second to move all the way back to the other side plus a quarter of a second. Gives me a total of one second at the same time, it takes one second to do this parallel task and one second for the move forward. Now let's take a look. So the fish moving forward, moving its tail, occurs at the same time. It would also make sense to me if the fish not only moves forward, it's going to coast in the water after it's done. So I can get the clownfish, get him to move forward after. He's done about a half a meter. So he moves forward a half meter by the, the tail movement and continues for another half meter afterwards. Let's see. Looks good, but there's a pause in between those two things. We can make the fish move, but it's important that we add detail with the animation style. The, we want the fish to start forward abruptly and end abruptly for the first movement. The coasting part, it will start abruptly, but end gently because he's coasting to a stop. Let's see how this changes. A much better, much better animation. So it's a little bit more fluid in the transition there. So now that we have this set, section of code that does the swimming, which would be this, this big block of code here, I'm going to take that and bring it to the clipboard. I've essentially cut it from my first method. When I select the procedures box, I want to create a package of code for all fish, not just my clownfish, not just the blue tang, but for all fish. Add a fish procedure and let's call it swim. Now it gives me beside the fish tab a swim procedure tab and I can drop my animations in here. Let's go to the clipboard, bring back that big block of code. You'll notice that it says this clownfish and they all appear in red because that would be one specific instance of the object. I want it to apply to all fish so I'm going to change that to this. That refers to all fish objects. Everything else stays the same. When I run my animation though, I only get the last part where he's coasting. That's because if we go back to my first method, 
I delay a half second and then I coast for my half meter. If I want to call the swim procedure that I've created for all fish, then I must select my object, clownfish, and you'll notice now that under the editable procedures for fish, there is a swim procedure. I can click that, drag it in, and now it will delay by a half second, call the swim procedure, which was that package of code, executes all of this, comes back, and then moves forward coasting to a finish. Let's see how that works. So it calls my procedure. I can call my procedure more than once. Let's go back, select the clownfish, and add a second swim movement. So now I've got a delay for a half second. I call swim twice and coast to a finish. So there's two swim calls and then it coasts to a finish. I can call this inside of a loop. I have a count. Let's do something three times. Let's call the swim procedure three times. So I delay by a half second, then call the swim three times and coast forward. Swim, 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 and coast. Fair enough. Now the power of the procedure as we've designed it is that it applies to all fish. So not only can I get the clownfish to swim, but now I can call that same procedure. The blue tank has this swim procedure. If I pull that into my first method, so I get the clownfish to swim forward three times and then coast, and we'll get the blue tank to swim once. Swim, 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 coast, blue tank's turn. Well, let's do the same thing here. Let's make the blue tang swim three times forward. And then we'll make the blue tang move forward. Half a meter. We'll add some detail so it will start off abruptly and gently. So the blue, the, sorry, the clownfish swims, coasts, and then it's the blue tang's turn. If we wanted these two, two th things to happen simultaneously, then we have to set up a few programming tiles that we'll do in order. Let's get, this would be the one for the clownfish, another one for the blue tang, and then of course we need to move the clownfish and the blue tang at the same time. So we have effectively called our procedure for both fish.